we've estimated that during the peak of bloom, there's four to five million flowers per acre. And this is a many acre field. So there's millions of those flowers that need to get visited by bees. And those bees provide the essential movement of pollen from the male part of the flower to the female part of the flower. And with the pollen being deposited on the flower at the right time, that then allows that flower to be fertilized. And then that swells and becomes the juicy blueberries that we're interested in harvesting and, and eating in the, in the summer and beyond. But in Michigan, it's extremely important that we have pollination in uh, blueberries, in apples, in cherries, in any of the, almost all the tree fruit crops require it. Without that kind of level of pollen movement by the bees, you get smaller fruit, smaller berries. It's really economically important that we have large numbers of bees to visit all those flowers at that critical period in the springtime. Across Northern America, we have uh, 13 institutions that are collaborating with MSU to look at the question of whether this strategy of trying to diversify the source of pollination, so not just relying on honeybees, uh, whether that can work economically and effectively for growers to better manage their pollination. One aspect of this grant is that we need to know how many bees are visiting flowers in a set period of time, in a set area. And with that, we can then extrapolate to look at how much pollination activity is in each field based on how many hives were brought here, what the landscape is around the field, and also um, how the farm is managed. And we're able to then look at how much of the pollination is being done by honeybees versus these other native bees. That There's three treatments on every bush that we're doing this, this yield assessment on. One of them is that the flowers were counted before they opened, and then we put a bag over them. So they will never get visited by a bee, and we'll get to see how many of the flowers turned into fruit and how big those fruit are if there's no pollination. The second treatment is open to pollinators, and so during the period of bloom, bees were able to visit it, and that's how much pollination the bees provided. And then this third treatment, where we use the toothbrush and the, and the, and the brush to put the pollen on, that's open to the bees, but then we add this supplemental pollen to get as much pollination as we possibly can, and then we'll be able to compare those three treatments and see what we're getting and what we could get if we improve pollination. And thinking about how all of that fits together, what's the most economical and effective strategy for farmers in these different crops across the country to adopt with the goal of trying to get reliable pollination every season to give the growers the best chance of getting good yields.